manual, automatic, CVT, or semi-automatic transmissions. How do all these transmissions differ? Which is the most popular and which is the most reliable? Let's dive right in. First, let's find out the purpose of the transmission or gearbox in your car. If you look at a car, it makes sense that the more the throttle valve is open, the engine can reach a higher speed. Pressing the gas pedal all the way down brings you up to the maximum speed. If you release that gas pedal lightly, the speed decreases. Maybe you think, why not connect the motor directly to the wheels? But engines run between 800 and 8,000 RPM. While the car wheels usually do about 1,800 RPM at an average speed of 60 miles an hour. That's a really big difference in rotational speed range. What would happen if you were to remove the transmission? Hypothetically, the engine would need only 1800 RPM to reach 60 miles an hour. But this is a fairly low engine speed. And if you run too long at such low speeds, the engine will quickly lose performance since the oil pressure will be insufficient for lubrication. Neither the engine itself, nor the wheels, nor the other components of the car would be able to handle running at such low revolutions. Another thing to remember is that the higher car speed doesn't equate to more engine power. Same thing with torque. More torque doesn't equal more speed. For example, if you're starting to drive uphill, you would need more torque and power, not speed. If you try driving your car uphill and try to maintain the same speed, you'll have to press the gas pedal harder. It might seem that the power remains the same since the speed doesn't change, but that's not the case. When driving uphill, the engine delivers more power at the same RPM in the same gear. And you can tell that by looking at the current fuel consumption. To effectively accelerate and overcome inclines, you need to maintain the RPM in the maximum engine power range. That's why the engine needs a gearbox. By reducing the speed with the gearbox, we can increase the torque while keeping the engine power constant. Also, there is no need for more torque. You can increase the transmission speed. So, the main function of the transmission is to control the speed and torque of the drive wheels. The transmission allows for optimal traction and vehicle speed, as well as reversing. Even more, the gearbox helps to decouple the engine crankshaft from the drive wheels, which allows the vehicle to idle or come to a complete stop without shutting down the engine. Let's look at the manual transmission. How does it work? It's based on a simple gear ratio principle. The input shaft contains gears that have a synchronizer and a locking ring. These gears are free to rotate as they aren't rigidly attached to the input shaft. On the same shaft, there are gears which rotate along with the shaft. A clutch is used to connect to the gears. When the clutch, which is moved using the gear level, is connected at one end with the synchronizer teeth of the desired gear and the other with the gear that sits rigidly on the rotating shaft, both the desired gear and the input shaft will rotate synchronously. But this isn't easy to do as the selected gear is not attached to the motor shaft and the gear on which the clutch is located has the rotational speed of the motor shaft. Therefore, these two gears have different rotational speeds and need to match the same speed to lock together. This is where the locking ring comes into play, because it can move along the axes. The clutch pedal is pressed, the shaft is disconnected from the motor. Then, when we move the clutch, it presses the locking ring against the cone of the gear synchronizer. Due to the high frictional force between the locking ring and the synchronizer cone, the speed of the gear matches the shaft speed. So the clutch can now move further to engage with the gear without any problem. Manual transmissions are relatively simple and reliable in design and inexpensive to maintain and fuel efficient. For example, the Peugeot 208 Active with a 1.6 liter petrol engine and 115 horsepower can travel 45.2 miles per gallon in urban conditions. Also, cars with manual transmissions have easier control in off-road conditions. The plus is that you're in control of the driving process however it suits you. One downside is that it can be inconvenient when you're driving in the city that you need to constantly change gears during traffic. That's why the automatic transmission was invented. And taxi drivers in New York City loved it. It eliminates the inconvenience because in essence it does the thinking and action for you. The technical word for it is hydromechanical transmission. The name sums out how it works. The transmission automatically shifts gears by using fluid. The automatic transmission fluid or ATF creates pressure in the system removes heat, lubricates the moving parts, and cleans the inside to prevent contamination. The automatic transmission fluid is contained in a fully sealed torque converter. 
The torque converter transmits torque to the primary gear assembly or gear grouping and acts as a clutch and fluid coupling. This part of the engine has two multi-vane impellers. Now after you start the motor, the flywheel begins rotating and activates the pump impeller. The impeller blades pick up automatic transmission fluid and direct it to the turbine impeller blades and forces it to rotate and transmit torque from the engine. Gear shifting is done by the electronic control unit, which ensures the gears change smoothly without the use of a clutch. The system was invented a long time ago, back in 1928. At the time, the automatic transmission was installed in the city buses of Sweden, and the torque converter we talked about was invented even earlier than the automatic transmission, at the beginning of the 20th century in fact. Now as you know, an automatic car has just two pedals, the gas and the brakes. The typical gear options you have are for park, drive, and reverse. That's pretty much all you control. Having a simple gearbox like that can last a long time, about 250,000 miles, unless you forget to regularly change the oil, usually after 40,000 miles. And if you don't change the oil regularly, then the valve body and filters will clog up. Then the oil pump won't supply the pressure needed to properly turn the gears. The disadvantage of the automatic transmission is that it doesn't have the same dynamics compared to manual transmission cars. Also, it has a higher fuel consumption and less fuel efficiency except for the very modern ones. Now, if you want a car with smooth driving, good acceleration dynamics, and more economical fuel consumption, then we should talk about a car with a CVT, or Continuously Variable Transmission. CVT is an automatic transmission that can change seamlessly through a continuous range of gear ratios. How does a CVT work? Think of a sports bicycle with six gears in the back and three in the front, and they're connected by a chain. When you put the chain on the large chain ring at the front and the smallest cog in the back, then it becomes harder to pedal. But you cover more distance because you get more speed. But if the chain is on the small ring at the front and the largest cog in the back, then you can pedal more smoothly and more often, but you cover less distance and bike speed is also lower. But this ladder setup gives you more torque, so it makes it easier for you to climb up hills. Another option is if the chain is in the middle chain ring or both the front and back, both gears having the same number of teeth, this is the optimal gear for torque and speed. And this example is similar to how a CVT works. Did you know that the first CVT was conceived by Leonardo da Vinci in 1490? In one of his schematic drawings is a diagram of parallel cones and a belt thrown between them, moving across an axis of rotation of the cones. This made it possible to change the gear ratio of the pair. The CVT system is based on a belt drive consisting of two sliding cone-shaped pulleys and a V-belt stretched between them. Torque transfers from the drive pulley to the driven pulley due to friction between the belt and the pulleys. One part of the driving and driven pulley is fixed motionless, and the second can move its axes to the left or right. When the drive pulley halves, moving towards each other, each push the belt outward, this leads to an increase in the radius of the pulley along which the belt rotates. As a result, the gear ratio increases. When a reduction in gear ratio is required, the driven pulley expands and the belt moves to a smaller radius. The movement of the pulleys is controlled by electronics. The torque converter is only needed to make sure the car moves from a standstill. After a start, it gets blocked. So, passengers in cars with CVT don't feel the gear shifting at all, and you get a smoother ride without jerking. CVT cars have better dynamic acceleration than an automatic transmission. Also, fuel consumption in CVT cars in comparison with automatic transmissions is way less. The CVT is very comfortable, but it has its drawbacks, too. CVTs are by no means cheap and it can really cost if you damage them. Mechanical friction occurs in the CVT, so the amount of energy lost is very high. CVTs are difficult to repair. Approximately 50% of the CVT system is controlled by electronics, so not all car shops can repair it as fully as they would a manual or automatic transmission. The CVT can also be more problematic because it needs to be carefully maintained. You need to change the oil every 30 to 35,000 miles, otherwise the valve bodies become clogged and the oil pump cannot build up normal pressure and so the pulleys cannot converge and diverge normally to clamp and unclench the belt. As a result, it slips and wears out a lot and can break. The belt itself consists of metal parts, and when it breaks, they scatter throughout the box, destroying everything around it. Now let's look at the semi-automatic transmission, which is similar to a manual transmission, but you don't have a clutch pedal. You can think of it as a hybrid between a fully automatic and manual transmission. Semi-automatic transmissions are more complex than manual or automatic transmissions. They're also prone to failures and malfunctions, and repairs are very expensive. 
And at the end of the day, in terms of reliability, the manual transmission remains more reliable than the semi-automatic. Comfort, efficiency, and reliability are the three main things for any gearbox you'd have. Combining all these characteristics in one box allows the driver to enjoy a comfortable ride and not worry about the car underperforming in unpredictable situations. Gearboxes are far from perfect and we'll just have to wait and see what improvements are around the corner. If you like this episode, please share the video. Thank you for your support.